morning, Mr. Abel. Jeffrey, what's going on, son? I know How are you today? You had to put the glasses on to make sure it was me. Yeah, I didn't know. I couldn't, I couldn't tell it was you. What's up? Hey, just uh, it's chilly up here this morning in Napa. We're yeah, about, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say about 38 degrees or so. We got Woo. some frost on the ground, but it's a beautiful blue sky day. Nice, nice. So uh, hopefully I'm going to get out there and um, hit a ball or two today. Yeah, yeah well, I'm going to hit a ball or two. I got doubles at 10. We're scheduled for the clay, but I don't think the clay is going to be ready. It rained pretty hard last night, so... Ironically, the grass here dries faster than the clay. So, <laughs> uh, Mission Hills, you might want to spend some money on the clay court drainage, uh, or we'll just we'll just go ahead and play in the. Sorry, we might play right. on the. Uh, Let's on... sneak out of the bubble there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, yeah. So uh, that's my day, and then uh, mine are supposed to play some doubles around noon. Right after that, some mix, but. Uh, um, and I'm looking at the San Jacintos, and I'm looking over the rooftops here, and it is covered top to bottom with snow. Wow. You know, and I can't see the bottom because, like I said, the rooftops. But that's at least two-thirds. So, anyway, we're having ourselves a winter down here. It's, it's everyone's saying it's unusual. Look, no one wants to hear about the winter down here. Um, no one wants to hear about the winter. So yeah. look, let's Actually, just... you're going to go out and play some grass court ball <laughs> after it snowed because the snow doesn't actually touch the grass <laughs> courts. True. I mean, I know. You know, wham with a wham with a violin, yeah, right? Yeah, the world's smallest violin. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, stop it. Um, right. Let's just dive in. I think everyone knows who this uh, who this podcast is for. Yep. And uh, maybe before we dive in, we should uh, let everyone know we, we are still offering a, uh, a free 10-minute coaching call. You, me, and yep. Jeff Jacklich on the phone. And uh, again, it's free, but it's a short time frame, 10 minutes. So you got to bring that one thing in your game right now that just bugging the crap out of you. You just can't quite figure out. And uh, let's see if we can get you organized on a different path to help you um, uh, solve that number one thing. The way to do that is if you're not on our email list, go over to goldballhunting.com and put in the first name email and um, you'll get access to our online scheduler. And if you're already on our email list, all of our emails at the bottom have got a link to that online scheduler um, so that you can find a day and a time that works perfect for you. So exactly. on that note, Jeff, it's, it's, I mean, because it's fun. They're fun. I mean, yesterday we did seven calls. We did seven I calls mean, as I was driving down Interstate Five from Northern California to Southern California, yeah. and that was the fastest trip. I mean, literally <laughs> and figuratively, the fastest trip I've ever had from door to door. Yeah, that was that was great. That was a lot of fun. I mean, it was fun. So I'm just uh, encouraging everybody jump in because it's 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 just a lot of fun and. Um, Anyway, and uh, we get to help a little bit. So anyway, so yo. today, B, yo, you're on the hot seat. All right, all right, lay so it on me. Here it comes. Here yeah. it comes. Are you ready? Yep. I'm. Well, I got See? everything organized. Got you know, I got okay. the, I got the, uh, I got the power shake with the, uh, with the Go Bears on it. Got um, it. Pathetic football team recently, but in theory they're getting better. Yeah. Well, um, the most important is, can you see the exit from there? Do you, do you know? <laughs> just in case you just don't in like. In case the hot seat's too hot. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm ready for you. All right, so here we go. So this is uh, division specific, mm. right? So in the 70s. Age group specific. Um, age group specific. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the number one weapon that you have now that you didn't have, let's say even in the 50s or definitely earlier in your career? Yeah, what's yeah, the for number sure. One weapon? Well, uh, Jeffrey, great question, and it's uh, it's an important question because, you know, as we were talking yesterday with uh, on some of our calls, we were talking about how you got to kind of come to reality. You got to do a reality check as you age up, right? Ow. And and yeah, and <laughs> that sounds and, like it hurts, Brad. <laughs> well, I mean, as we were both saying, like when I was younger, I was a pure serve and volley guy, pure. First, yep. second serve in singles. You know, I still do that in doubles now. Uh, second year, 70s. But, you know, way back then in singles, I was 
serve and volley 100 percent of the time uh, and, and and then on you know chip and charge off that off off that second serve return and just about everything every time i got stuck back in the baseline almost everything unless you hit the baseline boy that sure <laughs> looks like a juicy approach shot to me that's right so um <laughs> And I can't remember the moment in time, probably like the first year in my 60s, where I went, I can't serve volley all the time anymore. Can't and, do it. And it wasn't because of fitness. It wasn't because of that. It was just because the serve didn't have quite the same pop as it did before. Right. The legs didn't have quite the same get up for that first volley as before. Right. And the volley didn't have quite as much stick as before. Right. <laughs> so that trifecta uh, got me thinking for a while. And actually, I think I sort of admitted on those calls yesterday that, that there was a period, I think there was like a couple of years in there where I was kind of lost in terms of, you know, who am I on the court? I, I knew before who it was. Now it's going... I don't know who I am out here. I don't know. I mean, I've got to stay so, back. I got to hit ground strokes. What are these? Right. What so are it's these like, for? Like, it's like uh, you had your Picasso moment, the blue period, right? Oh, Where it's like the dark ages a little bit. Like, you know, who am I? That's right. That's right. So, uh, you know, short of cover, you know, short of cutting off an ear out of frustration. <laughs> um, I just sort of eventually, you know, started realizing, look, I, I, I got to learn how to play some groundies. I, I got to learn how to, you know, play a standard rally ball and be okay staying in the point. And right. over the course of time, what I, what I developed and I realized that became a weapon, and this is, boy, sure is getting a long way around to answer your question, Jeff. But... Get the, there. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Brandy. Um, was that... Uh, with my slice backhand is really where it started, and eventually I could feel it on my forehand as well. But in the slice backhand, which became my staple rally ball groundy, I didn't need to top it to hit a, a standard rally ball ground stroke off my backhand side, simply because I was way more accurate in terms of the landing spot. I liked the way that the, the slice, the ball would skid over there and stay right. low. It was like the easiest thing to do energy-wise where trying to top it over and over and be inconsistent with the landing spot. And the bounce really, the bounce really wasn't that big a deal. Right. right? It didn't really put him under pressure. So uh, I just stayed with the slice. And then what I started to realize as I got older was that I could hit a drop shot off of the exact same setup look air quotes, yeah. <clears throat> look. Yeah. And, and it became a weapon. It became a weapon that I never ever considered before because I was such a, I was so committed to serve and volley that I never really, I really never thought about it. And, and you know, I used to call myself an all-court player. Baloney. <laughs> <laughs> Spam. Baloney. I was not an all-court guy. I was just a yeah. one-dimensional you know, I'm up at net again, pass me if you can. And, right. and so my whole strategy was, I believe if, that if you're a good player, that you've got maybe five or six quality passing shots in your bag today. And my job is to get up there and, and, and force you to pull them out of your bag as early as possible in the match. And, right. then, I, and then I've done my job, right? <laughs> so I was not an all-court all guy. Now, at this age... I am, I'm truly an all-court player because I still serve and volley some. Um, and it kind of, it's sort of, um, it's kind of opponent dependent in terms of, <laughs> right. you know, I pick, I pick and choose my times. I, at Deuce Court, I might serve out wide uh, for some reason. Um, ad Court, I might do a little kicker out wide, come in, whatever. Um, I might serve the body and come in. It's probably first serve. Is it 50%? It might be close to 50% on first serves. You know, second right. serves, it's probably more down to about 15%. I'll throw in a bouncer and come in. But um, I'm very content now, staying back and, right. uh, and rallying the ball around if I have to and staying in the point and no longer feeling like, hey, 
I got to get up and force the exit, right? I got to right. either force him to go for it or I got to look for something and, and force the, you know, the Jeff Jacklich looking for the exit to get out of the point. I'm content to stay in it. And now I'm content on uh, the groundies to pull the trigger and, and play a dropper. I'm uh, also content on a second serve, which is what I do against uh, a lot of guys who I'm thinking of this one guy. He's kind of the classic pusher. You know, I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and play the dropper return to serve. Yeah. And yeah. Bring him in and just go, you're now out of your comfort zone. So right. the short answer to the question, Jeff, is the drop shot slash disguise. Right. right. And disguise is really is really the term that that I want to sort of get across to everybody that disguise means that from the same look, you can play different shots. Right. And 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 I can I, I even though I taught my forehand more on the on the rally ball, I can still look like set up and then boom, I can I can play the dropper. Right. And. On the other, hand, on the other side of the coin, I can actually sometimes a guy gives me a ball in the backhand, and I'll set up like I'll kind of Hollywood over over drama <laughs> thing. Oh, I'm going to drop it, right? And the next thing you know is boom, it's 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 a quick little knife back deep. Yeah. So I can disguise it from both both ways. Right. Looks like another cross court uh, deep. I drop it. It looks like oh, you know. Um, and then sometimes I get a short ball and it looks like I'm going to approach, I'm going to approach deep and whoop, you play and you play the dropper. So the disguise has to be set up on two things. I think number one is that you got to have the same look. Number yeah. one, <clears throat> I agree. And I agree. number, and number two, you have to have shown, uh, the shot that you, that, that the opponent thinks, well, that's a possibility. He could play this thing deep again. Right. And then you right. play and the dropper. I think, yeah, exactly right. That's where, um, you know, we've talked about, you know, doing pattern work, you know, in some of the other episodes. And, you know, the pattern work is what sets up, right? You're, you're leading them down the primrose path to create the opportunity for to have exactly what you're talking about, to be able to go ahead and reach into the bag. And I'm going to deliver the drop shot now because... He's expecting us to be in this classic cross court slice rally. Maybe I've delivered two balls now, but I've done it done it now for three, four, five games. Right, right. And so now you create expectation, and and now maybe the first time you deliver the drop, it's maybe it's on a break point, right? And because because it's a it is part of your toolbox, a, a seasoned, trained skill shot. You know, you mean you mean you actually have to practice it. You actually have to practice it. Stop so we're it. not reaching in as we, you know, yeah. Come stop on. It. So we're not talking about. You mean it's like, not a oh. quick fix? <laughs> right. It's not like it's not. It's not like a a tip. Yeah. No. No tip of the iceberg. No tip of nothing here. No tip of right. nothing. All right. So, so you got to so go you, work at it. You got to work for it a little bit. Yeah. So, so the idea there is that it, it is because it is part of your uh, primary skill set and toolbox. Right. It's not an afterthought to deliver it at that moment, or maybe it's thirty all on their on their serve, and this is going to give you the break point right. and put that little extra pressure on them going into that. So it's really you know I think you know it's it's way more calculated maybe than 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 other player than players think, and um, but you to, also have to you, uh, if we're talking about the dropper, you can't just do it on any incoming ball. So, no. I mean, if the guy, if you hit one slice, two slice deeps, and then his next shot is coming in hot and deep and, and, right. and rough, I you mean. You can't be stubborn. You can't go, okay, <laughs> well, I'm going to hack down and see if I can drop this thing because I've. Right. It's just, it's just, so you really have to wait for the right ball. And, and that's why the practice is so important because the practice teaches you experience in terms of for your own unique dropper uh if 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 we're talking about the slice backhand experience gives you for for you it teaches you really this is the perfect ball for you to do it on i mean you could take this thing and go back cross court but 
but there's it's 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 kind of like the guys with the semi to full western forehand grip the forehand there's only a few balls that you can actually be effective with that grip on you just can't you can't full western right. every ball to your forehand side and right. think that you're going to do the same thing so the same thing here and, and you know the other thing i want to uh before i forget is in doubles, like I'll play against some players that that really prefer serving and staying back, right? And I will show them a couple of chips and come in, and I'll you know I'll slide it deep, and then like you said, maybe on a break point or a big point, it sure looks like here comes the Hollywood drama. I'm going deep again, and then whoop, no, and right. and uh, and the and the setup there is the key there, so that you so that your drop shot doesn't have to be perfect. No. We're not talking about delivery of the ESPN highlight drop shot where the ball actually bounces back over the net onto your side <laughs> or, or where I'm actually aiming for the let cord winner. Right. Right. I mean, we're talking about set the setup being the construction of the point being being well executed so that you have margin, just like all your other shots, to be able to deliver a drop shot that is, <clears throat> for lack of a better term, good enough yeah. to get the That's job right. done. That's right. You know, and I think what you said about discovery of where in the strike zone is like, wow, this is juicy, and that's where you got to get out, and when you you got to practice it to find out where in the strike zone that that gold is to be able to deliver that drop shot um, unnoticed. Right. If you right. Know, good, disguised. Good. All right. I hear the uh, I hear the leaf blower guy creeping up. Um, <laughs> he's about two houses away, and he's going to get here. I think in probably about sixty seconds. And at that time, you won't be able to hear a a thing I'm saying. Perfect. So um, let's do this. Uh, I want to make the offer again about if if, if today's episode in terms of disguise, maybe the slice back in, maybe the dropper, uh, or if it's something else in your game that you want to chat about briefly, but that one thing, let's jump on a free complimentary, no charge. It's on us. It's on the house. Coaching call. Yeah. Uh, a private call, three of us, and, and let's do that and see if we can help help you solve whatever that, that, that one thing is that you want to work on. Uh, again, if you're not on our email list, just go over to goldballhunting.com, first name, email, and you'll get uh, access to our online scheduler. If you're already on our email list, then uh, all the emails that we send out at the bottom of it has got a link to that online scheduler. So, JJ, with that, uh, man, let's... Uh, is there anything else we'd like the, the fine folks to do today? Like us, share us, please subscribe, and let us know what you think down below. Right on, man. Right on. Well, look, guys, get out there before the leak blower guy shows up and help him or anyone else. <laughs> Have a spectacular day. JJ will do this again tomorrow. Can't wait.